Hey there, this is MathCamp321 giving you another solution to a PARC practice test. This is for the Algebra 2. Uh, question number 4 from the 2014-2015 practice test. Uh, just to be very clear, this is a two-part question. So this is part A and they're asking us to consider the equation 4 to the x squared over 2 to the x equals 2 and in part A they want us to know which of the following equations is equivalent to the one that's given to us. So before I get started there's a few things that I'd like to do as a warm-up exercise and the first of which is to consider the following problem. Uh, simplifying y to the tenth over y to the third. Well this addresses some of the rules of exponents and when you're dividing powers of the same base what you want to remember to do is retain the base and subtract the exponents. So this is going to leave us with y to the 10 minus 3 or y to the 7th power. Now the next thing that I want to remember is another property of exponents and this is going to be m cubed then squared. So in this example I'm asking you to recall raising a power to a new power so if I've got m cubed and I want to square that, the rule of exponents is that you're going to multiply the exponents together. So this would be m to the sixth power. Now with that warm up, I think we're probably ready to start the problem. Now the problem starts off with uh, this kind of complicated expression on the left hand side and it's all equal to the number two. And if we look at our four answer choices, they all end up with this number two. So I don't think they're going to want us to do anything with the right hand side. All the things that we have to do to manipulate are going to occur on the left hand side. So on the left hand side I've got this quotient. I've got a division problem. And I can't use this property over here unless the bases are the same. In the example that we talked about in the beginning the base was y for both the numerator and the denominator but here we've got a base of 4 and a base of 2. So the trick to this question is going to be to swap out this 4 and instead of writing 4 write something else preferably with a base of 2. So I'm going to swap out 4 and in its place I'm going to put 2 squared. And the power of that 4 is x squared. Now I'm not going to do anything to the denominator so for right now I'm just going to leave it as 2 to the x. Now as I transition to our second step, we're going to implement the property in red. We've got something to a power, but I'm raising it to a new power. So what I'm going to do is multiply these two powers together. And 2 times x squared is simply 2x squared. So in the end, my exponential expression is 2 to the 2x squared power. And the denominator again is just 2 to the x. Now with this particular rewrite, I've got a situation in which the bases are the same, just like the bases were the same in our initial example with our, uh, our y variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retain the base, which is 2, and I'm going to subtract the exponents. Now if we go back to our y example, I said 10 minus 3, now I'm going to say 2x squared minus x. And this was just a big huge manipulation of the left hand side and it's all equal to the number 2. So this all equals 2. So after manipulating the left side many times and not doing anything to the right side, this is what I've come up with. And this is one of our answer choices. It's actually answer choice D. So I'm going to go ahead and put a box around that. Now remember, this was just part A. There is a part B that follows based on that same initial uh, equation. So let's take a look at part B. Okay guys, this is MathCamp321 giving you the solution to question number 4B of the Park Algebra 2 2014-2015 practice test. Now, our solution to part A was 2 to the 2x squared minus x equals 2. Now, part B says 
which values are the solutions to the equation. Now one thing you could do is you could actually take each of these six answers and plug them in to see if you're going to get a true statement. But I think that would be time consuming. So the way that I'm going to suggest doing this is using the rule that to solve an exponential equation whose bases are the same, you're simply going to equate the exponents. So there's a rule, and I'm going to write this in green, and the rule says if a to the m equals a to the n, then it must be true that m equals n. So what that's saying is, is that if you have an exponential equation and the bases are the same, then you can simply set the exponents equal to each other. So here, I've got an exponential equation in which the bases are the same. I've got a base of 2 and I've got another base of 2. So what I can do is just set the exponents equal to each other. Now the exponent on the left is obvious. It is the 2x squared minus x. But the exponent on the right is a little less obvious. This number 2 is alone, but it's really 2 to the power of 1, as you may have guessed. So that's, that's a 1 right there. Um, so I'm going to set 2x squared minus x equal to 1. Now, this is another quadratic equation, and your first step in solving a quadratic equation would be to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move the 1 over and say 2x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to factor this, and I know when I'm done I'm going to have two factors, so I'll get that all set up. And now to actually do the factoring, I'm going to use the method that I use at my school, which might be different from the method that you use at your school. But I'm going to start by multiplying the first and last constants together, the 2 and the negative 1. And when I multiply them together, I get negative 2. And then I like to list the factor pairs of 2, which there's only one pair here. It's 1 and 2. And then I think about, for a moment, what the signs are going to be. And I need a difference of negative 1. So I think the 2 has got to be negative, and the 1 has to be positive. And then the next step that I do is a little bit weird. I look at that first term, the quadratic term, and I write it twice, but I drop the squared. So I just write 2x and 2x. And these are going to be the numerators of my fractions. And the denominators are going to be these winning values that I selected up here. So I'm going to put a plus 1 and a minus 2. And I'm going to read these fractions downward, reducing if possible. Now 2 over 1 can't be reduced, so I'm going to leave that alone as 2x plus 1. But the second fraction can be reduced. So instead of writing 2x minus 2, I'm going to write 1x minus 1, or just x minus 1. Using the zero product property, I'm going to set each of these factors equal to zero to solve for x. And in the first case, I end up getting x equals negative 1 half. And in the second case, I end up getting x is equal to 1. Now, both of these answers are on the list. x equals negative 1 is answer choice C, and x equals positive 1 is answer choice E. Now we might want to think just for a moment about checking. Is there any reason to think that either of these answers wouldn't work? Is it going to end up with a situation where it is undefined? I don't think it is, so I'm going to stick with these two answers. The answers are C, negative 1 half, and E, 1.